Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we're going to be going over an update to my initial intro to learning Arabic video. So after studying now for almost a year, I noticed a few things that were a little unclear to me in the beginning that I want to streamline for my viewers to make this a little easier. So we're going to go over a little bit of history. So the Arabic language. There are three different forms of Arabic in general. Over here, we have the first type, which is classical or also known as Quranic Arabic. We have modern standard Arabic, MSA, and we have colloquial or dialect. So the classical or Quranic Arabic, as it sounds, would be the Arabic as it is written and spoken in the Quran. Now, you're going to use certain rules called Tajweed. We're not going to go into that. But just remember, I'll draw that up here too. I forgot to write that word. T-A-J-W-E-E-D. Tajweed. The second one, MSA. This is what you would learn if you are in school, as I am. So if you're going to be doing a degree in Arabic in a university, you're going to be learning MSA, which essentially means that you're not going to use these diacritics or these vowel markings. And then you have your colloquial or your dialect, which is going to be the um, an informal type of Arabic that you would, for instance, uh, let me think of a couple, um, Egyptian, that's a very popular one, but there's many, depending on where you're from, Moroccan, there's another one. So let's come over here on this side. So harakat, harakat is if you are learning uh, the Tajweed rules, they would not refer to these vowel markings or the Sukun and the Hamza, they would not refer to them in Islam. We don't refer to those as diacritics, we refer to those as harakat. But as this is a basic course for people who do not speak, write, or read Arabic, I did not choose to use this form. I wanted to make it a lot easier, and that's why I use the term diacritic. Also down here we have these two words, Kufic and Hijazi. These are two of the early forms of the classical Arabic script. Now these forms um, did not have these diacritic mark markings that you have now. There were present um, a small number of dots and through my research in the Kufic, for instance, these dots were red. One issue I found is no matter where I've been online, whether it's been an app I downloaded on my phone or a website, a huge problem I see is that the majority of people or the offerings online I see are trying to teach people to speak Arabic. Now, speaking is not the most important thing. If you want to learn a language, the best way is not to download an app and press a button and listen to somebody speaking. Now, if you just want to go to a country and speak, fine. But if you want to learn the language, you need to learn to read and write. So you're not going to get around that. You download an app on your phone and you press a button. If you're sitting there watching someone draw the number, the letter out, you're si this is not very effective. You are going to forget over time. So I started with an app called Quran IQ and I did this. And it was so easy. After the first day, I thought, oh, this is ridiculous. So, for instance, Aleph. This is an easy one. This is, this is what I recommend you do in the beginning. Write these letters out. Just write it out. How hard is that? It's not hard. And, and while you're writing it out, you can say it in your head. Aleph. Ba. I'm doing these faster. But that's fine. See? So easy. How easy is that? Also, if you use those, for those of you that want to go back and watch my initial video, my initial intro to learning Arabic video, I used books that parents would typically buy their children. And you would see it like this. It's going, like, like we learned here in the US, those of us that were born in the 20th century and actually learned how to do things traditionally before apps took over. So for instance, look at this. So you're gonna sit here and trace this. This is what you do in those books. And I remember when I was taking Spanish in my undergraduate, first undergraduate program I uh, obtained, 
My Spanish teacher said, the difference between you all here that are sitting in this classroom and the rest of the individuals out there is that you all continue to read and write. And many of you may not agree, but I can tell you from personal experience as well as the individuals who have, who have reached out to me and thanked me for my content that many, many individuals, and I would make the case that a majority of individuals, at least here in the US, when you're learning a language like this, you need to write. As I stated before, if all you want to do is, is speak, then go ahead and use those applications. But if you want to have a deep understanding of this language, it's going to be best for you to read and write. And oh, let's go over these diacritical markings. So again, there are three vowels. We have three vowels. These are our vowels. A, A, E, U. Fata is the A, Kasra is the E, the Dhamma is the U. These are the short forms. And the long forms, again up here, Aleph Mad, Yamad, and Wal Mad. So, Arabic is a Semitic language like Hebrew, which means that this language is a language of consonants only. There are vowels, and even initially there were vowels, but these were markings that were not included because they were implied as the speakers of the language initially who were taught this were not taught to write in those markings. So this is as basic and stripped down as I can make uh, a follow-on video to the Arabic language. And I also want to encourage anyone who's watching my videos, please feel free to leave a comment and ask questions. And I'll do my best to clear up any confusion that exists. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace upon you. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah be upon you also. Happy learning. Allah Hafiz.